Hey, latte, cappuccino, flat white, cortado, and macchiato lovers. Mark here from Whole Latte Love. Today I've got five tips to help you get the best froth for your milk-based espresso beverages, including some bonus content with our test results for 10 dairy and non-dairy milks. Find out what type of milks are best based on frothing quality, pouring quality, and taste. Coming up in this video, I've got some animations comparing the differences in technique for producing a barista quality super fine froth for pouring latte art, and we'll compare that to a drier, airier milk foam for a traditional cappuccino. And if you're on a quest to become a latte art da Vinci, get the basics down in this video, then use the link up here to watch our video, How to Froth and Steam Milk for Latte Art and More. With nearly three million views, it's definitely a must-see if milk drinks are your thing. It's a classic step-by-step -step guide to producing great tasting and beautiful milk-based espresso beverages. In that one, you'll learn how to pour latte art, including a heart, rosetta, and tulip. So, the five topics I'll cover in this video. First up, it's best practices. These are the things you're gonna do every time you froth. Then we'll talk temperature for best flavor and how to get there using a thermometer or just doing it by feel. After that, it's frothing technique. That's how to position your steam tip and when that position needs to change. Then on to milk types with testing data on frothing, pouring, and taste quality of dairy and non-dairy milk alternatives. And I'll finish up with practice, a clean way to practice frothing, even pouring a latte art without using any milk or espresso at all. Is anyone up for a blue latte? Yeah, we'll take a look at one of those. Now, in this video, I'll be focusing on manual steaming. But if you're using an auto frothing wand, there's plenty of information here in this video for you as well. Beyond that, do check the video description below for links to videos on how to get the best from auto frothing steam wands. If you're new to frothing, I advise you to start with a 12 ounce pitcher. That's about 350 milliliters. It's got enough volume to do milk for a larger latte. It's easy to handle and even most entry level budget machines should have enough power to steam milk in these. I've got a variety here from the classic Rattleware Latte Art pitcher and some lookalikes on up to the Espro Toroid with a design to help encourage milk rotation that may benefit machines with less steaming power. Now, always start with milk that's as cold as possible. It's going to take the air better and gives you more time to work it. Some people even store their pitchers in the freezer. For fill level, try going to just below where the spout starts to form. In these size pitchers, that'll get you about five or six ounces enough for a large latte. If that's too much, you can go with less, but you probably don't want to add more as the milk will be expanding when frothed. Before steaming, make sure your machine is up to steam temperature, especially true with single boiler machines, which can take a minute to get there after flipping the steam switch. And a tip for getting maybe a little more steam out of some of the single boiler machines. Once you know how long it takes for the machine to get to steam temperature, you can start steaming a few seconds before the machine indicates it's reached full temp. Doing that with many single boiler machines will cause the heating element to stay on, generating more steam while you're frothing. If you wait until the machine indicates it's ready, the element's probably gonna turn off and stop generating steam while you're frothing. Now, that doesn't work with all single boiler machines, especially those with thermal blocks, but do give it a try with yours and you might get a little extra steam power. Other best practices come down to what I'll call purge, wipe, purge. So, purge your wand immediately before steaming to remove any water that's in the steaming circuit. You don't want that extra water in your milk. Then, as soon as you're done frothing, use a towel to wipe your wand before milk has a chance to bake on. Then, purge again. And that final purge, it's really important. When you finish steaming, the tip is still in the milk, and as the wand quickly cools, milk is going to be drawn up into the wand, and that final purge gets the milk out. Now, we have had cases where people didn't purge properly, and milk can get all the way back to the boiler, and that's gonna be a really stinky mess. So, always purge after steaming. 
To recap best practices, start with a 12 ounce pitcher, use cold milk and a cold pitcher, purge the wand prior to steaming, and wipe and purge again immediately after steaming. Before I get to the technique of steaming, I want to talk about proper milk temperature. So the whole idea behind frothing milk is creating a sweet, creamy texture. Now, heating milk increases its apparent sweetness, but only to a point. Now, if you're newer to milk-based espresso beverages, you might be expecting a temperature closer to a regular drip-style coffee, and let me tell you, that should never be the case. Milk is at its sweetest from 135 to 150 degrees Fahrenheit. That's 57 to 66 Celsius. As you go hotter, you lose the sweetness, and go too hot and you'll scald the milk. To get the proper temperature, you can use a frothing thermometer or do it by feel. If using a thermometer, be aware of lag. After you turn the steam off, you can expect the temperature to rise as much as 10 degrees Fahrenheit or 5 degrees Celsius. So, Cut the steam before you see your desired temp on the thermometer. If judging temperature by feel, you've hit that sweet spot when the outside of the pitcher is just beginning to get uncomfortable to hold due to the heating. So that's when you want to cut the steam. Frothing technique is all about finding the proper steam tip position relative to the surface of the milk. Too low in the milk and you won't get enough air in. Too high and you'll either get too much air in or make a really big mess. So the idea is to start with a steam tip just below the surface of the milk, then adjust the depth so you hear the occasional rip, which indicates small amounts of air being sucked into the milk. Now, whether you want a super fine microphone for a latte or an airier froth for a traditional cappuccino, the start of the process is the same. You want to get rips of air in as soon as possible. Milk's going to take air better when it's colder. For a fine latte froth, all air should be in by the time the outside of the pitcher starts to warm. At that point, you position the wand a hair deeper into the milk and find a tip position and angle which causes the milk to roll. That roll really helps break up any larger bubbles and mixes the milk to create a uniform texture through the pitcher. For an air cappuccino froth, you can continue sucking in rips of air a little longer and judge the froth by its expansion in the pitcher. When you get the desired volume, lower the wand into the milk a hair and continue rolling. When you've reached your desired temperature, shut the steam off with the tip still in the milk remove the pitcher, wipe down the wand, and don't forget that final purge to get residual milk out of the steam wand. After steaming, if you find you have some larger bubbles, you can knock and swirl the pitcher a few times to help break up and mix those. To recap frothing technique, start with a tip just below the surface, adjust tip position to hear occasional rips of air into the milk. For a latte, get all that air in by the time the outside of the pitcher starts to warm. For airier froth, continue adding air. When all air is in, find a tip position and angle which rolls the milk and continue rolling to final temperature. Shut off the steam with a tip still in the milk, wipe and purge the steam wand, then knock and swirl the pitcher if needed to get rid of those larger bubbles. In a second, I'll get to how you can practice all this without using any milk. But first, a quick look at dairy and non-dairy milk types and ratings based on our frothing, pouring, and taste tests. I've linked to our blog with the full results. We even tried goat milk, and you can get the results up here in the cards, or the link is down in the video description as well. Some notable results. Whole fat dairy milk, that's the gold standard. It scored five out of five in frothing, pouring, and taste for 15 points total. Our dairy milk runner-up was a surprise. It was lactate milk, which scored 14 out of 15 points, slightly edging out 2% milk, which had a score of 13. Our testers really liked the sweetness of the lactate milk. We had another surprise in non-dairy milks. Now, almond milk is one of the standard milk alternatives in coffee shops. It scored 
eight points, slightly edging out another popular alternative, soy milk, which scored seven points. Our winner in non-dairy was macadamia milk with 11 points. Non-dairy milks typically fall short in frothing, but our testers like the sweet, nutty aroma of the macadamia milk. Get our complete results via the links, including testing of cashew, oat, coconut, and that goat milk, which froths well, but putting it nicely was face-twistingly overwhelming. So you really want to improve your frothing skills or practice latte art? Well, here's how you can do it all day long without using any milk or espresso. For the milk, just use plain water and add a drop or two of dish soap. That combination is going to behave nearly identically to milk when froth. And here's Sapphire, a local barista who does some really incredible latte art with a really cool technique to practice pouring. Just add a drop of food coloring to a couple ounces of hot water in a latte cup for contrast and then use the soapy froth you did to pour your art. Anyone for a blue latte? Yeah, yeah, you don't really want to drink that one, but you can practice all day long. And of course, your equipment is going to be extra clean. Just don't forget to purge that steam wand. If you've got comments or questions on anything coffee, use those comments down there and I'd be happy to hear from you and I'll personally respond. Or you can always talk to one of our coffee experts by phone, chat, or email. Contact info is down there in the video description. If you like this sort of stuff, I do hope you'll subscribe to our channel. I'm Mark, thanks for watching, and I invite you to come back soon for more of the best on everything coffee, brought to you by Whole Latte Love. Want to learn more? Subscribe now so you'll know about the latest videos on everything coffee from Whole Latte Love.